Good afternoon. I'm forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams. The National Weather Service just moments ago updated us and gave us a warning for parts of Metro Detroit, including an ice storm warning for Livingston, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, and St. Clair counties, and a winter weather advisory for Wayne County. I'll have more in the forecast coming up. I am the last one that we are, are taking you inside the an emerging one. philosophy of active shooter training. Run and fight. And boy, do you learn you to fight. To but they feel it every step of the way. Gunfire, soft pellets, you I'm name the last it. One you're gonna hear from. Oh, they you're going to run. The chaos that can change your life to save your life is coming up. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pamela Osborne in for Karen Drew today. We start things off with a winter storm that's going to affect a lot of us pretty differently. Kim Adams is here with a look at what's coming tomorrow. Kim, some of us are going to need shovels and others are going to need umbrellas for this one. Yeah, and throw in an ice scraper as well because it just, just depends on where you live in Metro Detroit. So. I'm going to break this down for you. Winter weather advisory. That means travel will be difficult in these areas. Wayne, Monroe and Adrian, but it's not as much ice as what you're going to get in Livingston, Oakland, Macomb, St. Clair and also Washtenaw counties. That's an ice storm warning. Now the winter weather advisory goes into effect at 10 a.m. tomorrow and only lasts until 8 p.m. The ice storm warning doesn't go into effect until noon tomorrow and lasts until 4 a.m. on uh, when a uh, Thursday morning and then the winter storm warning as much as eight to 10 inches of snow north of I 69. But we're most concerned about that ice. So if you're traveling tomorrow in the morning, no problem with the morning commute noon, a moderate problem as that rain snow mix starts to move in and also some freezing rain, but high travel problems and weather impacts between four and eight o'clock tomorrow night. I'll have more in the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. DTE says it's ready to go with extra crews on hand to restore power, including help from out of state. But the utility company wants everyone to know there could be danger along with the inconvenience of losing power. If we do get that combination of ice and high winds, we're going to see a numbers of, number of wires come down. And when that happens, what's most important is that the public is um, aware and on the lookout for those wires, do everything they can to stay away from those wires. So here's what you need to know. You need to stay 25 feet away from any downed wires that you see and do not touch anything those wires may be in contact with. Call DTE at 1-800-477-4747. If you do happen to see a downed line, be aware that wires behind yellow tape may still be live and never ever use a portable generator inside of the home. A funeral service was held this morning for Arielle Anderson, the teenager from Harper Woods who was shot and killed on Michigan State's campus just over a week ago now. Inside Zion Hope Baptist Church on Detroit's east side, loved ones took turns speaking about Anderson's vibrant personality and her ambitions of becoming a surgeon. The large crowd inside numbered in the hundreds, including the governor and lieutenant governor. The service was full of prayer, music, and positivity. Father, we pray that you will come into this celebration of life, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for Ariel that has brought us all here together, oh God. Father, we pray right now, oh God, that you will touch the family, oh God. Arielle Anderson was a graduate of North Point or Gross Point North High School. We'll have more from her funeral service coming up at five o'clock. And there is a bit of good news to pass along regarding Guadalupe Uapia Perez, one of the five MSU students hospitalized from that shooting. Her family says that she is making slow but steady progress after undergoing major surgery on five organs, which included the removal of her spleen. She has been able to walk with help to the door of her room and back. And then there's this. When Lupe, a junior majoring in hospitality business, was able to speak, one of the first things she asked was, how are my classmates? A GoFundMe set up for Lupe with an initial goal of $50,000 has grown to more, more than $450,000. And we know with severe trauma like this, she and her family may need even more. If you would like to contribute, there's a link at clickondetroit.com. 
And Lupe is one of five MSU students at Sparrow Hospital right now. At last check, one was in fair condition, two were in serious but stable condition, and two remained in critical condition. When a man with a gun began terrorizing that campus in East Lansing early last week, this was the alert sent out by MSU police. It included words like run, hide, fight, which many of us have come to know through active shooter training. But many safety experts now say two of those actions are more likely to save your life. Paula Tupman went to see firsthand how active shooter training is evolving. You will not do that to my wife. Where are you at, Shay? Don't you look away. I know your inclination is going to be to look from. away, but our law enforcement okay. trainers are saying by looking away, you could oh, endanger oh, your life and others. Where are you at? Don't look away. You're all dead. Don't look away. Don't look away. Oh, there she is. One, two. It's hard, but by engaging and learning, you create your best shot against someone trying to shoot you in an active shooting situation. Allied Defense is fighting that fight, training by working police numerous times a week across the nation at the courageous invitation of those organizations and schools to teach workers and students how to fight back. This is Chemico in Southfield. I worry about keeping them safe, making sure they go home to their families, because you go to work to just perform your duties, and I want them to go home and be safe. Oh, he's gonna run! There are numerous active shooter training models being taught, but this newer philosophy does not subscribe to run, hide, fight. They teach run and fight. If you've got a mad person with a gun, you could be Usain Bolt, and you can't outrun that bullet. That's so you, you don't want to get shot in the back. It seems like you would want to hunker down. And that's not a bad option. You can hunker down behind a barricaded door, but you don't want to, you have to have a barricade in between you and the suspect. And then you, you need don't a wanna, plan B. And then you need a plan B and you have to be thinking proactively. Okay, let's get this straight. They're not saying don't hide. They are saying if you have to, it's just not enough. You have to be prepared to fight too. The group is tested before the training to see how they'll react and to figure out defaults. An uninformed default, flee, freeze, fight. Freeze gets you killed. She under there? You're all dead. You're all dead. Where are you at, Shay? Are you reinforcing that door so they can't get through it? Are you thinking about an escape option? What are you doing? Because if you're just hiding behind that closed door, if it fails, you have to be ready. Are you going to fight? Are you going to fight for your life? Where's Shay at? She fired my wife. Lieutenant John Swartz and Sergeant Scott Thede fire off blanks and yell and scream. They create real life chaos. One brave employee actually stops the scenario by finally grabbing the gunman. But people ostensibly, people have been shot because they hid in plain sight and froze. It's natural. It, it, was, just, it was just so intense. I don't know, my adrenaline's going right now. But then they learn the last resort incapacitate. Once you barricade, you're not done. You develop a plan. You don't want to go after the gunman if you don't have to. But if that gunman gets in, you have to have the mindset to disrupt what they're doing. And that means everyday items can become weapons. Coffee pots, fire extinguishers can blind and debilitate an assailant. A coffee pot can distract. If it has coffee in it, great. Throw it. A stapler. But the winning mindset, commit don't quit. What we assume that we're going to do when you're placed in that situation is totally the opposite because it we can plan and prepare <laughs> and say, okay, we're going to do this if this happens. But when you get in that moment, your adrenaline going and it's like, okay, fight or flight. Us working as a team, team was very right. vital. Know your escape route before you walk into a space. Notice your potential weapons before you sit down and understand what it's like to really be here in hopes you never have to. It was just so many eye-opening things, and we, I think we'll talk about this for days to come because it, we just want to keep everyone safe. We want you to have the training that you need. Go to clickondetroit.com and, of course, Local 4 Plus. We're going to be streaming this training so you can learn your best shot. Paula Tutman, Local 4.
On the heels of his surprise visit to Ukraine, President Biden spent today in Poland and delivered a speech condemning Russia's ongoing aggression against Ukraine. Devin Skillian live in the newsroom with more on the president's rebuke of his Russian counterpart. Devin? Uh, Pam, it's been a fascinating day. The president's speech comes ahead of the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. That was last February 24th. His visits to Ukraine and Poland come as Americans right now appear split on whether to send more American arms and money to Ukraine. Recent NBC poll uh, had 49% of Americans in favor, 49% opposed. That's pretty split. Today, President Biden met with Polish President uh, Andrzej Duda at the Presidential Palace in Warsaw. The leader spoke of the deep historic ties between the U.S. and Poland and the importance of continuing the NATO alliance. Later, President Biden was greeted by a raucous crowd at the gardens of Poland's royal castle, where he delivered sharp criticism of Vladimir Putin. When President Putin ordered his tanks to roll into Ukraine, he thought we would roll over. He was wrong. The Ukrainian people are too brave. America, Europe, a coalition of nations from the Atlantic to the Pacific, we were too unified. Democracy was too strong. Instead of an easy victory, he perceived and predicted. Putin left with burnout tanks and Russia's forces in, delay, in, dis, in disarray. Vladimir Putin delivered a fiery speech of his own today, saying he will not change his strategy in regard to Ukraine uh, and declaring that Russia is suspending its participation in a nuclear arms treaty with the U.S. Pam, right. back to you. Devin, thank you. <laughs> Still ahead, they're calling it the largest study ever of how a four-day work week impacts employees and a company's bottom line. Plus, remember what happened during last year's Oscars ceremony? Find out what the Motion Picture Academy is doing to make sure it's ready in case things go south during this year's show. And next